I'm not going to lie. When we get to the Murph pick and I choose like a, my favorite game, I have two and I'm going to stick to that. <laughs> this is the best of board game geek. What's up, everybody? My name is Nick. I'm Mike. We're the Brothers Murph. That's right. This is the best of Board Game Geek. We talk about all things Board Game Geek. Some hotness. Some, some news. news. Some of our own personal picks. Mike apparently is going to break the rules and choose, choose two games a month later. I'm doing it. Which is not allowed. I'm doing it. Nonetheless, let's get right into the news. So Our Family Plays Games has been wrapped up into the fold of Board Game Geek and they are now making videos for Board Game Geek on a monthly basis. They most recently had the top five family games to play this April. They are super cool people. We are big fans of them. We've talked about them many times before uh, and we love them so much. So Mick, Starla, Grant, the whole family, we are so happy that you are part of the Board Game Geek family now. Make sure to check out their video. You can see it right there on the front page of Board Game Geek and make sure to give them a nice warm welcome to Board Game Geek. A bit of Board Game Geek news is that the Board Game Geek Golden Geek Awards are now open for voting. We had nominations. There's a whole bunch of different awards, like two-player games, card games, uh, art, innovative games, strategies, all these different kinds of things. And there's also uh, Best Podcast, what we're actually nominated for. This game is broken. Check out this game is broken. <laughs> but nonetheless, I love the Golden Geeks. It's just, it's cool because it's all people-driven. So the people, you, me, we all get to vote. And that's who wins these awards. So it's a really good way to look at what the general kind of consensus is. Because it can get kind of confusing where some people, it seems like everyone really likes this game. Oh, this, um, this game seems like it's doing really well. And then you see the Golden Geeks, you're like, oh, this is what people are voting on. So I guess this is what people are really, really into. So make sure to vote in the Golden Geek Awards if you haven't already. There'll be a link down in the description below for that. Um, and congrats to the, the, the winners in the future, I guess. All right, so that's just a little bit of Board Game Geek news for you. Make sure you check that out right there at the top of the page, uh, as always. And Nick, what? speaking of the top of the page, you know what's on the top of the page? Hotness. The hotness, the hottest games that everyone's been talking about in the last month. So let's go down to the table and talk about those games. All righty, so we are here to talk about the hottest games of the month. These games are all of the hottest. People are talking about them. They're bouncing around. Really, really excited. Let's get number 10. Number 10 is Guards of Atlantis 2. So this is back out on GameFound. This is a big kind of, it's a, it's a big MOBA game. So a yes. MOBA game is where you have troops, kind of like mindless kind of, troops. Wah, 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 they go like bop, 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 bop. They go forward and you can't yeah. control them. You usually have like heroes and stuff. So this is a big MOBA game. And another only other MOBA game I can really think of is like, Rum and Bones is like a MOBA type sure. game. And board then, game. And then right. Cloud Spire is a MOBA, MOBA style board game as yeah. well. But Guards Land is people I know really, really like. It's back on GameFound right now. So I think it's just kind of like a second printing. Yep. So yeah, it seems cool though. Yeah, I think it's neat. Like we've, uh, again, I like board games doing different things. Yes. Um, that aren't done every day. So something like this is just hasn't been really done a ton. So I like the idea of experimenting with that in the hobby. It's always great to see and uh, obviously to get another run. Indeed. It means it's pretty successful the first time. Yeah, indeed. So that's number 10. Let's get number nine. Number nine is Ark Nova. It's Ark Nova. It's here. <laughs> it's always here. Listen, we all love zoos. They're awesome. They're animals. Well, they're good, mind you. Like, if they're yeah, good crappy zoo, zoos, like, are not great. That, that focus on conservation. If it's not good, it's a horror show. So, good zoos are great. We're here to build good zoos in Ark Nova. It's a super fun time. Tableau building, the action selection is really interesting. We're obviously personally big fans of this one. We are. And uh, it's been around the hotness for. Let's be honest, when that expansion drops. Oh, Forget it's about be it. Unreal. Forget about it. All right. It's uh, done very well for itself and yes. for good reason. And good for them. And it's still number nine in the after all this time. Indeed. Number eight, uh, we talked about, I believe last month, yep. this is uh, Hegemony or yeah. Hajmajmany, as Lead I Lead like your say. class to victory. So this is a big async game where you are a different class. You can be like the working class yep. or like, like the middle class, uh, the capitalist class, uh, the rich people, or like the state. And essentially you're trying to push for your class. And yep. it's different for each class, different struggles for each class. Like the working class, it's hard to get ahead because they're working class, unfortunately. Makes sense. But this game really, really simulates society very well. They did a ton of research, had a bunch of like economists and people being like, yeah, this is actually how society works. Right. And again, this is one of those games where like, it may be a little bit too real for me personally, that's but I'm so intrigued about last time. by it. Yeah, yeah, like super interesting idea for a game. So that's really neat. It's just one of those things like, 
Am I down to like really meditate on all these things? I kind of use board games <laughs> as an escape, but nonetheless, it's a really cool concept. Absolutely. It's really, really cool. Very intrigued by this one. I know people are really, really loving it. Uh, it hit people's hands very recently, so people are playing it like crazy and talking about it. And Hemegeny, Lead Your Class to Victory is number uh, eight. Let's get number seven. Number seven is Endeavor Deep Sea. It's a new version of Endeavor, in Mike, Endeavor, I should say. You should have taken that nap. I should have. You shouldn't have. Why? Because I got to play this game. I know. And you did. Mike, we were at PAX Unplugged, and I went to go play this game. Mike took a nap. I didn't know when I was going to and take it's a really nap. Fun. That's what you were going to do. To be fair, that's true. But this is uh, this is uh, a kind of a sequel to Endeavor: Age of Sail. But this one, yes. you're you're like bio, like kind of marine biologist. You're doing like conservation stuff yeah. in the ocean. Yeah. And it's really really fun. If you like Endeavor, it's it's still very Endeavory, but it's got mechanically, yeah. Mechanically, it's got a really cool theme. I really like like conservation science themes. It's very very rad. I liked it a lot. It's out on I think Game Founder Kickstarter right now. Um, and. Yep. We're probably gonna back it because I really, really liked it. One hundred percent. Like we uh, really loved the the gameplay of Endeavor: Age of Sail. We love the theming of this infinitely more. Uh, yeah. Just science stuff, conservation, it's focus cool. things in the ocean and health of the ocean. It looks that really nice. Yeah. Invested in, and it looks really cool, and it has the same mechanical kind of ramp up as of, yeah as Endeavor, which we really enjoyed mechanically from that version. So could not be more excited for Endeavor: Deep Sea. Nick has played it, so we know it's good. So now I'm really excited and. I'm not going to say I regret the nap because as a noob dad, I'll take any <laughs> nap I can get. Fair. Um, a game that's hitting everyone's hands, including our own, is Darwin's Journey. It's right, it's right over, there. over there. Darwin's Journey was a long way to get Darwin's Journey, but it's a big worker a placement while. game with Thunder Griff uh, where you are Darwin, Charles Darwin, on the Beagle, and you're going around yeah, and you're, you're studying discovering with Darwin. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of, uh, yeah, you're going around discovering stuff. There's a bunch of action selection. Uh, big worker goodness. placement. Whole, yeah. It's big. The rule book is mega thick. Some modules yeah. and things that all came in that. I'm always saying that based on organizing it was was wild, and there's a ton of ver ver variability in the yes. setup. Yes. <laughs> I learned that much. We're super excited. I was super excited when we backed this a while back, and now it's finally hitting people's hands. A couple of our friends have gotten it. I know people have been playing it. I'm really, really excited to play this one. Absolutely. Uh, and we've heard good things so far. So that's Darwin's Journey. We can't wait to crack into our copy. And that's number six on the hot list. Number five, I was looking, actually is, a, is pretty darn close to, to breaking into the top 100. And this is Heat. Ah, that's Pedal crazy. to the Medal. Really yes. to the top 100. Yeah, wow. it's pretty darn close. Let's see where, where, where it is at the time of filming this. It's uh, pretty darn close here. Man, when I was in Boise, fun facts last week, I wanted to go to a game store. I did not make it, but I was going and I was going to be hunting for this game specifically. It was, was 106. Like, 106 at the time of this recording. Oh. By the time you see it, it might be in the top 100. So that's Heat Pedal the Metal. is a racing game that people are really enjoying. Uh, it, mostly because it's got a ton of different modes you can play. There's a really basic mode. You can add yeah. weather effects. You can play with AI uh, cars, which is really great. So even if you have a low player count game, like two player, you can play a really and exciting well. tight race with lots of cars on the map, which is what you want in a racing game. So this game seems to do it really well with interesting kind of clever card play and a lot of ways to kind of turn this game into a campaign game. There's there's just a, a box full of stuff to explore, yeah. which is really cool. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Uh, we got to get our hands on it at some point. Can't wait to play it. I just need to get to that Boise store. I know. Man. Number four is the Isofarian Guard. Uh, hi, Pippin. We got Pippin right here. here. So Isofarian Guard is a big solo or co-op one to two player game. So it's I, mostly going to be a solo game. Yeah. Um, you got to see with that, that player count. Like, okay, most people are playing this alone because yeah, it's two just players. It's an interesting huge campaign. Account. And there's a great picture on BGG right now of someone's cat sitting in the box for this because so it's, it's not so, a tiny so box. big. Very, very big game, kind of campaign game, but it's a big bag building game. And it seems very interesting. I've been playing more solo stuff recently. Yeah. So these kinds of big solo games are becoming more and more on my radar, where I'm just yeah. kind of like, ooh, that does sound great. Whereas before big solo games, I would've been like, nah, I don't play solo enough. But nowadays I'm kind of like, ooh, I could, especially I maybe, could leave this out on the table for a while. Yeah, especially maybe like a oh. campaign. Now oh, Mary got, dogs are fighting. Now Mary got very attention. jealous because we were petting No Pippen. one cares. I don't know if the lower is here. We'll, we'll remove the lower if it is. <laughs> the point is our dogs are excited for Isofari and Guard. Hi, Those baby. kind of campaigns as a solo or kind of two player experience make it, I think, easier to organize and play. So that's really cool. <laughs> and it seems like there's clearly from the box size a lot to explore yeah. here. So it's getting into people's hands, which is always exciting. So it's number four on the Hotness, the Ice Fairy and God. Indeed, let's get number three. Mikey, we're very excited for this. We're very excited. Nick and I personally are very big Garfield games yes. fans, and they have the next game in their kind of an ancient anthology series. This yeah. is Ezra and Nehemiah, yeah. uh, which is 
th per them, uh, kind of being billed as a Garfield, Garfield's greatest hits. Yeah. Uh, meaning they have little bits and pieces from a lot of um, other Garfield games who do like the West Kingdom trilogy, now the South Tigris, the North Sea trilogy. Uh, and it seems to be combining a lot of stuff into a big old game. This is a very big game for them. Uh, set in Jerusalem as, as uh, refugees are coming back home. They're kind of rebuilding the city, uh, reteaching the Torah. And it's kind of been, it was a really interesting part of history where they're kind of uh, rebuilding and collecting themselves again. Yeah. Which I think is a really interesting setting for a it game. It seems cool. I really love the ancient anthology. That's what like, Legacy of You is, Hadrian's Wall, Raiders yep. of Scythia. It's really cool kind of parts of history and this one yeah. is just such a cool theme yeah. and it, the fact that it's like, it's a big game and a heavy game and yeah. like and it's also like kind of a greatest hits i'm just like come on that sounds awesome we like all the games that you're pulling from here <laughs> and you're making it. something kind of really interesting together so i can't wait to find out more it was just announced uh, from garfield games yeah uh, shem and sam did a kind of an announcement video about it and uh couldn't be personally more excited for whatever that yeah. game's gonna be very very excited number two is an expansion that's kind of just blow the roof off um, and that's Cascadia Landmarks. Can't wait man. <laughs> People I'm so excited for Cascadia This hotness Landmarks. is really kind of like a reflection of what we're personally excited for. It yes. sometimes does sometimes doesn't happen that way. Yeah. This is yeah the first expansion for Cascadia which is a game that Many, many people. When the spiel, have, I mean, yeah, just yeah, like. It just, it's just, it's crushing. gotten all sorts of awards. We personally, you know, kind of deemed it as like the most replayable game in recent memory. It sure feels like it, yeah. Uh, and now landmarks are gonna add kind of new elements and uh, ways to to kind of configure your board. I'm not gonna lie, I don't um, care what it adds. I'm gonna buy it. Uh, 100%. Can I, can I be real about it? It's just like, don't care, give me it. Don't care, give I'll me more. I'll find out after I buy give it. Give me more of that best sobel art. <laughs> Yeah, I really, you know, what we want. But it so. does it does legitimately seem cool, but it's one of those things where I'm like, this is one of those games where I'm like, I'll I don't slap the name Cascadia on it, I will buy it. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that's just where we're at with that game. But uh we love Cascadia. Can't wait to see more about Cascadia Landmark. So it's number two on the hotness for this month. Let's get number one. Number one, everyone's playing right now. It's on yeah. BGA too, everyone's playing it there. We just got it, it's Earth. It's Earth, so the pre-orders have had been submitted. Now everyone's getting their games uh, shipped to them if they got it uh, wherever you ordered it from. Uh, it's getting into people's hands. It is on Board Game Arena, and it's gotten really high praise from a lot of folks. We also personally I love like it. it quite a bit. Um, yeah. And it's just a game where you were you're kind of managing uh, uh, ecosystems and, and trying to have healthy plants and stuff, and finding synergies between the abilities of all these plants. There's basically four actions, and whoever the active player is, you're going to choose one of four actions. They will get a version of the action. Everyone else will get a lesser version of that action. Love follow action. And then all the actions are color coded, and you're going to look in your tableau of cards and say it's the red action, for example. You will also get to do any of the red action abilities from all of your cards in order going top to bottom, left to right. Yeah. So you get this crazy engine built up. Bonkers. You can have an engine so that you are always doing a little something, or you just like, oh man, the yellow is just crazy. I do all sorts of stuff. You, everything in this game can give you points. You can also spend the various things like sprouts or growth uh, tokens and stuff to funct functionally power up other parts yeah. of your engine. Everything is both co points, points and, and currency, currency yes. which is just really fun and interesting. And it's about building kind of the wackiest engine in that tableau of cards you can. We really like it. We think it's really fun. I think it's gonna stick around in the hotness for some time because it's a game that just seems perfectly calibrated to be very fun. Yeah, and people satisfying. love engine builders and it's very, very fun. Yeah. So that is the 10 hottest games from last month. We always talk about um, the 10 most played games with Mary, who is just, you, Hi, you, Mary. you need all the attention, don't you? I, I just, know. Oh my Lord, I love her. So we're talking about the 10 most played games month. So on BG, you can log your plays. And so we're gonna go over the 10 most played games um, in order of how, often, how much they were played. So uh, at number 10, we have the crew Quest for Planet Nine, which is 5,451. <laughs> I see you, dog. <laughs> uh, so it easy. finally happened. The crew, Mission Deep Sea, overtook the other crew. I honestly don't know why it took so long. I personally either. think it's way better. Uh, that's at 5,623 plays. Indeed, Terraforming Mars had 5,657 plays. Right on. We have uh, Seven Wonders Duel is on 5,805. Cascadia has 7,080. Wow, big jump. Yeah. We have Marble Champions, of course, usually around uh, on 7,469. We have Azul, which always gets played a bunch, and Especially it's on BGA, which is... Mini. Uh, that's right, as new as old mini, which is uh, 8,648. Uh, very cool. We got Earth, as we mentioned earlier, getting played a lot on BGA, probably 8,873. Give it one more month, I think it's going to be number one. Uh, 100%. Because it's on BGA, give yeah, and then it one more month. Yeah, yeah, and it'll be in people's homes. Arc Nova, again, big game, gets played a ton, has 9,591. It's and still the, getting played that much. The Unstoppable. 
This yeah. whole year, wingspan, number yeah. one again, 10,248. It's been in the 10,000s, I think, every month. Yeah, it's people will be playing in the some lead. wingspan, man. Playing a lot of wingspan. Yeah, so that is the 10 most played games month, at least according to people who have logged their plays yeah. on BG. So make sure to log your plays because you can manipulate this list. Um, oh, you know what number 11 is? Frosthaven. If you were playing some oh, yeah, Frosthaven. Uh, you're going to see that pop up. <laughs> All right, let's go over and pick some Murph picks. These are cool things that we found on BGG. Let's get to it. So my Murph pick is this 3D printed like shifter for the game Heat Pedal to the Metal. This was made by Board Game Canuck and this picture is by Villainous Eye. Um, and this is down in the files section on the Heat board game page. And so down in the files, there'll be links to the SDL file so you can print this out if you want to. This is really, really cool. I love 3D printing and I love 3D printing stuff for board games. We, um, over on our channel, The Bros Murph, we actually used to have a whole series where we used to print out different stuff for board games because People who work on 3D printers tend to be kind of nerdy and geeky. People who play board games are nerdy and geeky. It's what we do, right? So it's a lot of crossover between those two hobbies, 3D printing and board game stuff. And so there is a ton of stuff for board games out on the internet with 3D printing. You can go onto a website called Thingiverse, which is a place where people can put up files, STL files, things they created, and then you can just download them for free. They're all free. And there is a ton of board game stuff on Thingiverse and um, Board Game Canuck put these files up there for free. You don't have to pay them. You can just get the files and print them out on your own home printer or on a friend's printer. But there are so many. If you have a favorite game, someone has made a 3D printed thing for that game. And it's probably out there for free. It's really, really fun. One of the coolest things we ever made is we made um, these 3D dinosaur paddocks for Dinosaur Island are super cool. And there's things like inserts. We made an insert for A Feast for Odin with Norwegian's expansion in there. And it is without a doubt the most perfect insert I've ever seen. It's designed perfectly. And it's just like, and they just put this out there for free and people can just print it out. It's like, it's just so cool. I love 3D printing. I think these shifters are so, so cool. I think they're such a cool thing to do and put on your board. Now you have a little shifter just brings that immersion in, it brings you, immerses you into the game even more is what I'm trying to say. It's really, really cool. Make sure to check out the links for this. So my Murph pick is a simple list. We had Arbor Day recently, which is in celebration of all the wonderful trees of the world, which are vitally important to all of us, as we know. So Arbor Day is a great uh, a time to kind of dwell on nature a little bit. And uh, on the front page of Board Game Geek, if you kind of scroll down a bit, there's a whole bunch of kind of curated custom lists on all sorts of topics. And there was one about games to play this Arbor Day. So you had things like Arboretum, Photosynthesis, all these sort of tree-centric games, which are actually a lot, and they're all really, really interesting and often kind of brutal tactical games, which I guess nature is kind of brutal and tactical in that way as well. So that's something that just made me happy. It reminded me that Arbor Day uh, <laughs> has happened. Uh, and just felt very springy and, and kind of perfect for this time of year. So don't be afraid to scroll down the page of Board Game Geek. That front page goes on and on and on. You'll find all sorts of interesting lists, fun kind of collections of photos and things, just a ton of stuff to explore that's right there on the front page. Alrighty, those are some Murph picks, but now we have to choose one game, two or games. my case, Mike's case, two games. Two. This is our favorite game of the month. I'll go first since you, I guess you choose one of yours and I'll go and then you go. My only one game is Gaia Project. Really? Finally played Gaia Project. What were you between? What was the other one? Kanban Eevee, which is also my favorite game of the month. I have two and I've stuck to it. Wow. We There's two like major games that we wanted to try for a long time it's that true. are on the heavier side. True. And we got to play Gaia Project and, or I, I played Gaia Project, I should say, yeah. and Kanban EV in the same month. And how dare you make me choose between them? They were both super enjoyable, heavy, brain melting experiences, games that will reward you for coming back and learning and getting better and trying again. And I am very excited to keep playing them. So that's, that's awesome. why I had to choose two. I'm not gonna do one. That's fair, that's fair. My favorite game was Legacy of You. I finally got a chance oh. to play it. Uh, a solo Man. only game by Sham Phillips and Garfield Games. Mike's played a little bit, but I haven't had a so chance good. to play it, but I got to do some solo gaming and it's really, really fun. Brutally hard. I do not know how you win that game. I got close I the first do. time I played it, got destroyed the second game I played. So like, no idea, but Legacy you really, really fun solo game, super hard. Really, really great. And then that's gonna be it for the best yes. of board game geek. Mikey. Let us know in the comments games that you really played yeah. and enjoyed, that it, whether it be new or old, a classic, uh, something like Gaia Project, which is not new necessarily, but I finally got around to it. Hey. Let us know in the comments below what the favorite thing you played this month was. Indeed. Until next time, we'll see you later. I'm Mike. I'm Nick. <laughs>